Thank you so much for the invitation to take part. And I'm really sorry that I can't be with you in person this evening. Thank you to everybody who's been involved with organising this remembrance event. Although, sadly, it's a recognition of the fact that we have lost some wonderful colleagues, some incredible journalists who made a great impact through their work. And they all still had an awful lot more to give. And that's a terrible loss for everybody. And these are awful personal tragedies for those who are close to them, their friends and family and colleagues, but also for the wider world who benefited from their journalism, from their perspectives, and the ability to reflect on and tell stories about important issues that matter to people. And they were able to change lives in the course of doing their work as well. Unfortunately, globally, the safety of journalists has been a serious concern um, for us for, for a long time. The NUJ has been very active in campaigning um, for, well, for our whole history, but certainly you know, in recent decades in partnership with the IFJ, the EFJ, and other unions around the world to try to protect um, the safety of journalists and raise awareness and, and lobby um, governments about this. And we've seen these concerns very starkly in recent days in Palestine and Israel, where we've witnessed the unbearable loss of life, including the loss of far too many journalists. And let's not forget Ukraine and Afghanistan and so many other areas of the world where conflict and corruption continues to endanger so many lives. But I think, unfortunately, people forget that here domestically in the UK and Ireland, safety journalists are still a real concern for us. The threat hasn't gone away. Lyra's murder was a very recent one. An incredibly talented young journalist in what was thought to be a safer world, but we were all brutally reminded that we can never be complacent about that. And we all know that the murder of journalists has a chilling effect. It silences those voices that are exposing wrongdoing, and it has lasting repercussions for the work that all of us do. When I visited Dublin a few weeks ago, Seamus took me to the Veronica Gear and Memorial Gardens in the ground of Dublin Castle, um, which was very moving. And the inscription on the statue says, be not afraid. And it's a powerful one that speaks to the incredible courage of journalists who pursue their work, despite the threats to their safety and their lives. But there are multiple layers of injustice that go be beyond the murder of, of journalists, such as the lack of action from the police that we saw with Mart Martin O'Hagan's murder, and multiple obstructions in the fight for justice that allow our colleagues' lives to be taken with impunity in some cases. It emboldens those who will go to any lengths to conduct their business in the shadows. We're still seeing an increase in hostility towards journalists. And it's a pattern that's been escalating for a long time. And the causes are multifaceted and so complex. But essentially, we're seeing an erosion of trust in journalism. We're seeing a proliferation of disinformation and misinformation, especially through social media. And we know that the majority of young people now get most of their news from social media platforms like TikTok. And on top of that, the conversations that we're having in the context of artificial intelligence demonstrate just how easy it is to manipulate information, manipulate people's perceptions to the extent that genuine reports and images or footage are accused of being propaganda or, or of being manipulated. But then disinformation and conspiracy is held up as the truth and spreads, uh, as you know, the saying goes, you know, faster than truth can put its boots on. But where does that disconnect come from in people's brains, you know, where journalists are being seen as the enemy by the public, as well as the enemy of, of those in power who don't wish to be scrutinized. And we need to support people to understand that without us, they don't have their freedoms. And it's our job to witness the world and to report on it. And we do that for everybody. Without the work that we do, we don't have a functioning democracy and we would have no means to hold those in power to account. 
we wouldn't have access to the insights and the information that tells us what decisions are being taken that affect our lives. And without journalists, none of us have a voice. On International Workers Memorial Day in April, we make a point of remembering the dead and fighting for the living. And we know that nobody's life should be put at risk for doing their job. The NUJ fights every day to protect journalists and journalism using every lever that we can. And events like this are important in raising awareness of the need for a safer world, as well as taking the time to remember those that we've lost, like Lyra, Martin and Veronica. Thank you. <laughs>